Boom, welcome back folks. We're here at the Palmer's Teaching Kitchen at the Shotland Family YMCA. We're gonna do another dinner for you tonight. Uh, today is uh, a stir-fried Asian vegetable uh, with chicken and couscous, right? It's gonna be a fun one, it's different. Most people have stir-fry with rice, but today we're gonna try the couscous. This is an ordinary package of plain couscous, and we'll get that started right away. So first and foremost, I went ahead and boiled two cups of uh, low sodium vegetable broth. You can use chicken broth or you can use water like the, uh, the package recommends, but I always like the ability to add extra flavor uh, into whatever I'm cooking, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. The idea of cooking couscous is really simple. You bring your liquid to a nice boil. As soon as it begins to boil, then you go ahead and you throw in your couscous. You just dump it right in there. So two cups of liquid, one package of the couscous, once that stuff starts to boil, as you can see, we simply put the cover back on and believe it or not, we turn it off, right? So that's just going to sit there and absorb all that flavorful liquid and become couscous in about five minutes, which is also a great thing to know uh, for weeknight meals when you have to have a little uh, starch or you want a little uh, uh, grains in your, in your meal. And this ancient grain is a, is a terrific one. So the rest of our ingredients are uh, spring style vegetables along with some classic Asian vegetables in the stir fry, right? You can see we've got snow peas here. Uh, we've got carrots. We've got shiitake mushrooms, which are one of my favorites. A uh, little yellow squash, because that's up. They're small, but they're up. Broccoli, of course, is always a, a good additive to a stir fry. Of course, my favorite, the red pepper. Uh, we've got... Um, uh, what do they call those things? Radishes. <laughs> Silly me. Uh, a lot of Asian food has water chestnuts or daikon or things of that nature. You can purchase those things if you'd like, but I happen to have some radishes in the refrigerator, so I pulled them out. I like that peppery crunch that it gives it. It's a, it's a nice flavor balance. Of course, my favorite, garlic. We've got some fresh green chives out of the garden today and a small piece of ginger. Um, the last and most important part is bok choy, right, which is an Asian-style cabbage. You can use a Napa cabbage if you want. You can use uh, uh, regular cabbage if you have it, but the bok choy is nice, thick, leafy greens, uh, very healthy and very durable in a stir fry. So we'll start quickly by taking our chicken and slicing it, right? And with most stir fries, you want to see a nice, thinly sliced piece of chicken. So I'm just going to cross cut over this chicken breast and, uh, and put little slices together for us. That's all. And we got that pan warming up. We're gonna start by sauteing the chicken in a, in a separate pan. Uh, this is one of those things that I typically would call a one pot meal, but uh, the fact is I got a lot of stuff here in a small pan. So we're gonna go with two pots today. Uh, let's start by a little bit about a tablespoon of the uh, sesame oil into our hot pan, okay? And that's just gonna be for our chicken for now. We're gonna come back to that as well. Right? That pan is nice and hot, so it makes a difference putting chicken in a hot pan versus a cold pan. So make sure you heat that pan up though. Very good. Our chicken's cooking, our couscous is cooking, and now it's time to set the rest of our mise en place. That is to put everything in its place. So we'll start with the squash here. I brought my big Japanese uh, style slicer in today does a great job for thin slices, and I think that's sort of the trick to a really nice presentation for a stir fry. So on the Abias cut, just start to crank these things out in nice thin slivers. You can take your time at home with this. It doesn't have to be fast. Nobody's in a race. But this knife sure makes it easy, I'll tell you what. X is a spatula too, isn't it great? Okay, shiitake mushrooms, wonderful. Uh, used to be a wild type of mushroom, but as is with most wild mushrooms, I should at least show you, the stalks and the stems on these things are pretty tough. They're pretty woody. So first for me is to just chop those stems off, right? And we'll get those things uh, nice and sliced thin, just like, just like the squash. Okay, oh, we're good with that. The peas we don't touch, we're just gonna go right in there, snow peas, snap peas, whichever ones you happen to like at home. For the carrots, same thing, we'll clean off the ends real quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing into half. It's just kinda easier to cut that way. And then the same drill on the bias, nice thin slices all the way down the length of the carrot. Okay. 
Yeah, it's fun for TV, right? Yeah, we'll do one more. Nice, make a lot of noise in the kitchen. Means you're having a good time. Got the pepper over here. Remember our pepper trick? You take off the top, you take off the bottom. We'll come back to that stuff in a little bit. One slice down and then just lay that knife flat right on there and unroll that guy. That goes into the garbage or the compost. And believe it or not, this thing works as a great slicer too. So just the tip of the knife on the board. If you keep your knuckles, keep your fingertips in, and your knuckles, you see how my fingertips never come near that blade? That's how I'm able to do it. I put pressure down on the pepper, and as I just keep working my hand back a little bit, I keep my fingers away from that sharp thing. And we're all set with peppers. Great color on that too. Last one is the radish. We're gonna do the same thing we did with the carrots. Cut that in half. Trim the ends off, and then nice thin slices on a bias. Nice. Great flavors here. Okay, over to ginger. Ginger is a root. You can use all the ginger you want. You can even eat the paper on the outside if you want to, but it peels off pretty easily, as you can tell. And a lot of times I'll just take a regular ordinary spoon and just kind of shave the, the, the skin off with the spoon. See, it comes up whoop, pretty easy. Just like that, okay? Some of you have a, uh, a rasp at home, or rather a, uh, a file of sorts. To do that, I'm gonna use my cheese grater here. This is a Parmesan cheese grater. It'll work just nice. For, uh, for taking care of our ginger, and I just shred it all up real easy. A little or a lot, it depends on your taste. I find that it's a really bright, wonderful, complimentary flavor to all these vegetables and the garlic, so I'm gonna use a whole bunch of it. Very good. Nice, love the ginger. Okay, and then these little, we'll save these for the, uh, for the garnish. So we'll set our ginger aside and we'll bring this bok choy back over here. We'll give it one big quick chop. Okay, I washed it already in my, my colander. So I'm gonna take just a few pieces of it, set it on the, uh, on the board here. Right, and I'm gonna draw the knife lengthwise down there just to put a couple of slices into it. That'll help take apart uh, some of those big leaves on the outside edge. Back to the julienne cut, or the chiffonade, I should say. You can see how handy this big knife comes in when you need it. Okay, so we're looking good. We've got our bok choy all set. We'll come back to our chicken here. Make sure that's cooking up nicely. Looks like it's browning very nicely. Crank that up one more. Okay. Now to our big pan. If you have a large skillet at home, once again, that's probably your best tool. Uh, but since we have this uh, squatty pan right here, I think that's gonna come in just beautiful for us. Right, perfect. So uh, back to the sesame oil, about two tablespoons of sesame oil because there's a lot of vegetables to saute in here. So we're gonna heat this pan up, put the oil right in there, and now we're ready to stir fry. So as with most stir fries, once our mise en place is set, we'll start with the garlic, get that in there cooking. Okay, quick stir, get all coated with the oil. Then I start, put my, I put my ginger in. I love ginger. I'm sure most of you do too, but a little secret, I've always liked Marianne better. <laughs> Silly me. Anyway, 
back to cooking, hard stuff goes in first, right? So the carrots are next on this list. We want to get those as much time to cook in here as possible. Most stir fries, they don't last long. It's really a question of having all your ingredients set. That's the best way to, to handle it. So we'll go ahead and throw our carrots in. Next will be these uh, squash. These will cook down in no time. Okay, onto the broccoli. Toss that in there. Keep stirring it. Keep the pot moving, you know. Keep the food moving in the pot. You want to keep those that garlic from burning, but stir it in and get it all combined nicely. Nice high flame, and that'll be cooking. Okay, on with our snow peas. Give that a quick stir. This is really starting to come together. I can smell it. Red peppers, we need a little color in there. Very nice, very nice. While I have my chicken almost done on this side of the table, I'm gonna pour my shiitakes right in the pan uh, with the chicken. And get those cooking in there. I like those to get a little caramelized while they cook, so it never hurts to have a little room to stir them around. Yeah, it's very nice. Stir over here. Look at this stuff. You guys can use any vegetables you want for stir fry. It doesn't have to be what you see here. I think the trick is really to get it all cut around the same size. It adds nice detail to the presentation. Okay, in goes our radish. We're cooking. Now we're cooking with gas. Okay, on to the bok choy. Give that a nice stir. This is going to be a tasty dish. I wish you guys could smell it on the computer, but it's not possible. Okay. Now we're going to get this thing rolling a little bit. Back to our vegetable stock. Uh, I did use a little bit. Again, I used two cups in the, in the uh, couscous, but I'm going to throw about a quarter of a cup in here just to sort of get things going. Stir fried veggies. Stir fried chicken. This is starting to brown up real nice. Okay, our cashews I'm going to pour into this pan just to sort of warm them through. It's not necessary to really steam those with the rest of that liquid. So we'll just get that right there on the side pan going, okay? more flavoring and seasonings. We're gonna use a little bit of uh, soy sauce now just to add to that flavor. This is a, a tamar tamarind style. So in other words, about a tablespoon and a half. In other words, it's gluten free, which is nice. Uh, if you have gluten allergies or issues, you can buy a lot of soy products that are gluten free. Uh, you just have to look at the label closely and uh, they should take care of you. We've got our sesame oil in there, our soy sauce, and now last, a little bit of rice wine vinegar. Once again, that acid to me, always puts a little bit of punch of flavor. And that's all there is to that. So we are stirring and frying. We are stir frying. <laughs> Look at that. That's some nice fresh veggies right there, folks. Okay. Our last step is to take our chicken, mushroom, and cashew mix. It goes right from one pan to the next. Off that goes. Now we'll stir this dish around. Boy, you can't expect better than this, right? Dinner Wednesday night. So back to our. Uh, huh, I gotta chop up my chives. I forgot to chop my chives. Okay, we're gonna hold those to garnish. And move this out of the way, and in comes our platter. Very nice. Okay. 
So our couscous, as you can see, comes up just like rice, nothing to it. Just boil the liquid, add the couscous, and then fluff it up and it's ready to serve. You can put a little vegetable oil or olive oil in the pan to keep it from sticking. You can add a little salt and pepper. You could add some cayenne or anything like that. Uh, whatever you want to do, it's your choice. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of gently lay this around the side of the pan for me. What's that? Oh, hi Nancy. Nancy's having Asian stir fry tonight, I know it. Yeah, see, one box makes a pretty good amount. Should feed your family without any problem. You can always do two though, if you really love that extra boost of uh, grains. And we're back to the final kick. Our vegetables. We'll just make a little room here. Okay. I'm good with spoons, but sometimes I'm better with pouring. So I'm going to pour this right out on here since it's all ready to go. Not bad for a bunch of vegetables and one piece of chicken in there. That's it. Woo! Look at that, guys. Here's our little garnish. Some green, fresh green chives. Green onions, scallions if you have them. And then lastly, some black sesame seeds right over the top. Really adds a little punch of color and a nice way to garnish this plate for just a gorgeous, gorgeous presentation. Thank you guys so much for paying attention. If you have any questions, send us an email or comment on our post. We really appreciate you joining us. And I hope you have fun and I hope you have uh, success in the kitchen like we do here. Thanks, guys. We'll see you again next week. I think we're going to play with a little watermelon because the 4th of July is on deck.